here I've got two nice limits, which would arrive probably at the tail end of a calculus type course. So we'll do them one at a time. The first is the limit as x goes to infinity of the integral from zero to x of arctan of t squared dt over the square root of x squared plus one. Oh, and before we get started, these come from the following two math.stackexchange posts. So this first one, 36023266, is for the first one, and then this other number is the post number for the second one, which we don't have on the board yet. Okay, so let's first note that this is an indeterminate form of type infinity over infinity. And we can see that because as x goes to infinity, the value of arc tangent gets closer and closer and closer to pi over two. But if you recall, there's a convergence theorem that says if the argument does not approach zero, then the integral cannot converge. So the integral converges to infinity in this case. Okay, so let's see. This integral in the top converges to infinity as we let x approach infinity. And then the denominator also kind of clearly converges to infinity. So that means we've got an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. But notice our top function is written in terms of an integral or an antiderivative. So we might want to use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Although I will point out in the calculus book that I've recently, recently been using to teach calculus, which is the open sex, the open source calculus book, which I really like those books. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus part one. And the one that is typically known as the fundamental theorem of calculus part one is the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So I don't know if that's just a thing with the open stacks books or if that swapping the labels is more common than I might know. Okay, so anyway, this says that if you take the derivative with respect to x of this function defined as the integral from a to x of f of t dt, you simply get f evaluated at x. Okay, so now let's go to it. So we'll apply L'Hopital's rule. That means we need to take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. Luckily, the numerator is just totally set up for us to apply this fundamental theorem of calculus part two. So this leaves us with the limit as x goes to infinity of the arctan of x quantity squared. And then what do we have in the denominator? Well, let's maybe note that the denominator can be written as the square root of x squared plus one, which is the same thing as x squared plus one to the half. And then using the chain rule, or maybe the generalized power rule, and the notation that this blue arrow means take the derivative, we'll get 1 half times 2x times x plus 1 to the negative half. So this simplifies to x over the square root of x squared plus 1. So that's just a little reminder of how the chain rule works for this denominator function. So that means we can write this as x over the square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so that's good. But now notice as x goes to infinity, this term approaches 1, and this term in the numerator approaches pi over 2 squared, given the end behavior of the inverse tangent function. But since the two component functions in that quotient have a limit, we can use the quotient rule for integrals. Or maybe flipping this around, it turns into the product rule for um, limits, I should say. So we have the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of x squared plus 1 over x times the limit as x goes to infinity of the arctan of x quantity squared. And like I said, this term goes off to 1. And we can see that because the degree of the numerator and the denominator are essentially the same. And then this next term goes to pi over 2 quantity squared. In other words, pi squared over 4. And that would be the final value of this limit. Okay, let's look at our second one. So our next limit will be another indeterminate form, which we could calculate with L'Hopital's rule again, but in this case, we'll use another method just for a little bit of variety. We'll look at the series expansion, so the Maclaurin expansions of the appropriate functions. So let's consider the limit as x goes to zero of the natural log of sine of x over x all over x squared. 
So notice as x goes to zero, the denominator definitely goes to zero. And then furthermore, the numerator or the inside of the natural log of the numerator approaches one. That's a well-known trigonometric limit, which means the whole numerator approaches the natural log of one, which is also zero. So this is of the form zero over zero. Okay, so let's see what we can do with it. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over x squared. And then we'll have the natural log of sine of x over x. But if you recall, sine of x over x has a pretty nice Taylor expansion or Maclaurin expansion. And that's 1 minus x squared over 6, which is 3 factorial plus x to the fourth over 24, which is four factorial, and then so on and so forth. But notice that we can group all of the remaining terms after the one into one piece, factor a x squared over six out, and rewrite this as one minus x squared over six times f of x, where f of x approaches one as x approaches zero. And that's because we can easily write down what f of x is in this case. Let's see, it'll be something like one for this term being factored out plus x squared over four, or maybe that should be minus x squared over four. But the important thing is that all of the rest of the terms have x terms in them. Okay, so that's exactly what we'll do. We'll replace sine of x over x with this expansion right here where we've gobbled up the remaining terms into this function. So I've got one minus x squared over six times f of x. Okay, and then next I can apply the Maclaurin expansion for the natural log of one minus u. This can be derived pretty easily by integrating the standard rule for a geometric series. This will give us negative u, and then minus u squared over two minus u cubed over three, so on and so forth. So let's maybe write down some of these terms. So let's see, we'll have the limit as x approaches zero, one over x squared. And then here, I guess the role of u is being played by this x squared over six times f of x. So we'll have x squared over six times f of x. And then we'll have the square of that over two. I guess this should have a minus sign out front. Maybe we'll take the minus sign out front of everything here. So that'll give us plus this thing squared. That's going to be something like x to the fourth over four times f of x quantity squared plus x to the six over eight times f of x quantity cubed, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. But now we can factor a bunch of terms out of these ending terms. Maybe we'll factor out an x to the fourth and an f of x quantity squared. So that'll leave us with the limit as x goes to zero. We have minus one over x squared, x squared over six times f of x plus x to the fourth times f of x quantity squared times a leftover function. Notice that leftover function will start with a quarter and the next term will be something like x squared over eight times f of x, so on and so forth. So we'll gobble all of that up into g of x. And this is gonna be where uh, g of x approaches a quarter as x approaches zero. Good, and that's just based off of what all is gobbled up by that g of x. Okay, so now let's multiply this negative x squared through. That'll give us the limit as x goes to zero of negative one over six times f of x, and then minus x squared times f of x quantity squared times g of x. And now we're essentially done. We can use the fact that by construction, this f of x approaches one as x approaches zero.
which means this f of x approaches one as x approaches zero, squaring it won't change that. G of x is approaching a quarter, but then x squared is clearly approaching zero, meaning this entire term here is approaching zero, thus leaving us only with negative one quarter. So I'd like to point out that this is most definitely not the easiest way to do it. The easiest way to do this problem would probably be L'Hopital's rule, but sometimes I think it's fun to like play around with another method just for some insight. So if you're still here, I've done a lot of other videos on the channel where we investigate interesting limits. One should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check it out, and that's a good place to stop.